Naked and Afraid, Last One Standing, Season 1, Episode 7 Review. The Super Alliance has crumbled, the power dynamics are changing, and two of the remaining survivalists are gone forever. For this review, I'll spend my time talking about Chini, the failure of Operation Let's Get Rid of Jeff, this elimination challenge, and I'll give my predictions for who has the best chance of being the last one standing. So without any further delay, let's jump right in. In my opinion, it's really no surprise that Chini tapped out of the competition. I had her as one of the weaker survivalists on this season of the show, and she really has done nothing of significance during her time on the show. Between her passing out and her blind hatred of Jeff, it was well past time for Chini to tap out and go home. Now I find it interesting that Chini claimed that tapping out had little to do with Jeff being on her team, but as Jeff pointed out, it was pretty convenient that Chini decided to tap out only mere minutes after the groups blew up with Jeff in episode 6. Chini isn't fooling me, and I don't think that she ever had any place being on a show like this. Yeah, she may have done good on her showing during her episode of Naked and Afraid, but I wish that any of the other women from Naked and Afraid Frozen, minus Trish of course, would have taken her place on the show. So I wish I could say that I'm sad to see Chini gone, but her elimination was only inevitable. But now we have the failure of Operation Let's Get Rid of Jeff. And in the comment section of my last review, there was some debate on whether the Super Alliance had the right to starve out Jeff, and my issue wasn't really with what the Super Alliance was doing, because at the end of the day, this show is a competition, and most of the rules aren't really written in stone. But in my opinion, I was getting tired of seeing how the Super Alliance tried to equate Jeff's decision to barter his items with how they decided to starve him out. In my opinion, it's apples and oranges. But what I liked most about this episode was how the power structure changed in Jeff's favor. For starters, no Chini means one less person that supports the Super Alliance. Jeff also convinced Gary to stand up for himself after realizing how Matt and Wise were trying to dictate the rules for the remaining survivalist. It seems like the threat of Jeff following through with his plan to sabotage everybody did its job in knocking some sense into the remaining survivalist. And since there's nothing in the challenge rules that forbids sabotaging, then I would say that Jeff would be within his right to retaliate for the group's decision to starve him out. After all, what goes around comes around. If there's anything that I found disappointing, it was Sarah having this belief that everybody on Matt's team was her friend and Jeff was the enemy. Seeing how she did the work of catching a fish only to share the fish with Matt's team was pretty silly. She actually thought that giving the other team a fish would somehow convince them to share whatever food they catch with her team. And I think Sarah's plan may have had more support if she had a track record of proving her worth to the remaining survivalists. But she didn't, and since I'm speaking of Sarah, let's move on to the elimination challenge. What I liked about this episode's elimination challenge was that it was an individual challenge. Everyone was out on their own, and because the challenge was timed, the person who finished in last would have to leave the competition immediately. Now I'm pretty sure that most of the remaining survivalists expected Jeff to do a pretty bad job on the challenge. After all, Jeff has had the least amount of food to eat, and he's also injured. But Jeff finished third out of everybody, and he proved that he's still a threat in the competition. Dan and Matt finished ahead of Jeff, but Matt has an injury that may hinder him from being able to hunt or compete in another time challenge. Now as I expected, Sarah came in last of the competition, and because of that, she was eliminated. And I'm sure there'll be some debate on whether Steven was right to follow Sarah and find the cash that she worked hard to look for. But for the millionth time, this is a competition and there's $100,000 on the line. In my opinion, Steven operated within the rules and if Steven did the honorable thing and allowed Sarah to claim the nearby cash, then he would have been eliminated. And at the end of the day, I find it ironic that Sarah treated Jeff like crap because she automatically assumed that Jeff would screw her over. And it was her former partner, Steven, that would do the screwing. But then there were six and here's my predictions for the show going forward. Although Matt's team had no luck catching fish with a net, and nobody's had any luck killing the Impala with a bow and arrow, I think Matt's team will eventually catch fish, and I think Jeff will kill the Impala. And I think this because there's entirely too much foreshadowing going on for these things not to happen. And after seeing episode 7, I still think Dan stands the best chance of winning it all. Matt's injury may slow him down, or he might be trying to make everybody think he's injured, so that they will underestimate him. I don't think Gary will get too far, 
because he's proven time and time again that he gets in his own way when completing these challenges. I think Jeff will give Dan a run for his money, but I also think that Steven is a sleeper for the challenge. I'm calling it right now that the finale will feature Steven or Jeff versus Dan, and Dan may win it all, but we shall see. So this marks the end of the review. Feel free to leave all comments below in the comment section, and I'll be sure to reply to everybody. Until next time, stay tuned and stay safe. Peace.